Of the many deficiencies you'll find in camera phone cameras, abysmal macro abilities are right up there with slow focus. Even camera phones that claim to have some sort of so-called macro functionality really just mean that you can get within a couple inches and still scrape out a decent picture. Today we're testing to see if the optical pickup lens from a DVD burner can turn your camera phone into a macro photo taking machine. You have to forgive us for the lack of deconstruction pictures and video. We got so excited with the screwdriver and the tin snips that there wasn't much to left to look at when we were done. We definitely suggest using more tin snips and prying and less tedious unscrewing with a jeweler screwdriver set. You're not saving the drive or the pieces of anything, so you might as well rip it apart. The only piece you'll want to be delicate with is the actual lens. Use a razor blade to gently slice through the glue that holds it in place. You'll generally find it inside the aluminum carriage directly in the center of the drive. However you unscrewed, pried, or beat the lens out of the old drive, now you've got it in your hands and it's time to put it to good use. This trick will work on any camera phone, but if you have an HTC Hero, like the one we're going to be using in this video, you're in for a treat. The optical pickup lens is a near perfect fit for the raised bevel surrounding the Hero's camera. Let's take a look at some of the pieces we're going to be using. We have the optical pickup lens, the actual laser lens, which we won't be using, some needle nose pliers to hold things, a hole punch to punch the hole in our tape, and a bunch of other stuff that we're going to zoom in on to see if we can take some decent macro pictures. Let's take a look at the two lenses. This super tiny plastic lens is the one you're going to want. It'll be deep inside the aluminum carriage. Use your razor blade to pop it out. This guy right here is the really obvious one you see when you rip the case open. That's not the guy you want. Let's take a look at what you're going to need here. First we have the phone. We're going to flip it over. We're going to clean it up here because there's some fingerprints on it. And then we'll get our lens and give that a little tiny wipe down. It honestly doesn't make much difference at the quality you're going to get out of a camera phone, but it helps. Time to get that fingerprint off. We're using some low adhesion painters tape here. In the original guide, they use a cardboard mount, but that's not entirely practical in most situations. It's nearly impossible to hold the cardboard mount perfectly in place and take a macro picture with a steady hand. We'll use a hole punch to make a hole. And that's a moth in my garage. The lens is exactly the size of the hole punch. If you're lucky, like me, it'll hold in place. If not, you can take two little scraps of tape and secure the edges of the lens. We'll do that now. Although it looks like we're going to be taping over the lens, in fact only the center of the lens needs to be exposed. So keep that in mind if you're going to make your own mount. We originally made a mount out of one of the ribbon cables left over from inside the DVD player. But again, it wasn't very easy to hold it in place. So a little tiny bit of tape for all the macro video and pictures was perfect. And there you have it. Let's see what it's capable of. First, we'll take a look at the logic board from the DVD player. If you haven't already torn your DVD player apart, we recommend keeping one of the logic boards because it's a great uh, surface to test your macro capabilities on. Now we're going to take a look at some 22 bullets. For the unfamiliar, these are extremely tiny and could easily fit inside the body of a big pen.
This metal rasp here is small enough that I can use it for fine detail work on metal and plastics. With the macro lens, however, it looks like a standard wood rasp that's an inch to two inches wide. Here we've got a small caliber bristle brush. It's copper caught up in a uh, tighter wind of steel uh, wire. You can see a little tiny thread on the needle and those pliers holding it in place. As fun as it was to look at bullets, logic boards, metal rafts, and other tools, you may not have had a very good sense of scale. Let's take a look at this pencil here. You can see the grain on the wood. Let's pan up here to check out the tip. Now we've got a dime. Get some pretty good detail on here. I'm just holding it with a pair of needle nose pliers. Although it was fun to mess around with the movie functionality, most people would be using the macro lens to take a close-up picture of things for sale on eBay or serial numbers on devices or just for fun. So here we have a standard picture from the HTC Hero. It's not a bad little camera, it's a decent phone. All around pretty good, you know, even lighting. However, it's not very close up and using the digital zoom on the phone didn't help at all. So here we've got our decent picture of the logic board from the DVD player. Let's put the macro lens back on and take a close-up picture. And here we are with the DVD lens back in place. Considering that all we did was take apart a DVD burner that was slowly rusting in the bottom bin of our workshop, I'd say that we got some pretty good results out of a simple hack. All you have to do is unscrew the case, pop out the lens, use a little bit of tape, and your camera phone will be capable of taking extremely up-close macro photographs of whatever you can get your hands on.